Well, it seems a little disingenuous to try to create a video on a new deck when everything's gonna get nerfed in a few days. Well, not everything. Welcome back to Not the Gwent Deck Try Athlon Wing Panator. It's just me, Panator. We're gonna talk about the new patch that's coming. Uh, the user experience patch. I believe it's patch 2.02. It's going to make a few changes to the game. Not all the patch notes have been released, but if it did, uh, dump a video that explains some of these and we're gonna talk about it. Don't expect any cute um, graphics here. This is low quality, this is low quality and low effort content, so enjoy it. Anyway, uh, what's the, what's the summary of it? There's a reworked tutorial. I did, I do remember it and because I only went through it once, it kind of says how bad an experience the tutorial was, but I remember it months after I've gone through it. It was a series of nonsensical fights that taught you the mechanics of Gwent. That's good. Teaching you the mechanics of a new game that you might be new to is great. Having a negative experience in the tutorial is not so great as it will taint the rest of your experience. It has been apparently reduced to like free encounters and a bunch of post encounter things where you use these starter decks against each other. Definitely a better experience overall. And which leads to our next point, which is that these starter decks have been reworked. Uh, these have been done. These changes have been made with input from the, oh my God, that fan is so loud. Uh, with input from the fashion uh, fashion ambassadors. Maybe they could be fashion ambassadors, but actually they're faction ambassadors. So you know that there's some quality behind it. High quality, in fact. I mean, there are some notable additions. The starter deck for... Sorry, I got distracted. The cat's here. Uh, for Northern Realms is Foltest and has Anna Stranger in it. Now, Anna does not necessarily synergize with Foltest, of all people. But she does, she is a good card that you can use in another deck. Like, say, if you craft a Maeve or unlock a Maeve, you can probably use Anna in a Maeve deck. I think you should use her in a Maeve deck. I am just saying, I feel like that's a better option than anything else. So it's some of the choices, the card choices, are a little nonsensical. And that there are two of the zeal-giving soldiers in the full test deck. But hey, it's a good start. Uh, Nilfgaard has Sweers, uh, Squirtle has Milan and Sheldon, because good god, why not teach people the horror that is Sheldon really early on? Why not? Because they're going to craft it, man, we'll just, just, just give it to them. The good news is that these decks appear to have some way of countering every other starter deck, so people who are just getting to Gwent will face peep other people and get a taste for what it feels like to have your deck countered. Because it will provoke you into making new cards by crafting and then trying to work around those flaws. It also teaches you that nothing is forever and that you probably shouldn't start with monsters because monsters will give you Aridin who, wow, his boost got one more point. So his leader ability has two charges, boosts by free and gives a shield. Uh, I miss my... Uh, I mean, look, at, look at how they massacred my boy. Look at how they massacred him. Cleaver has also been nerfed. Uh, he is now a 10. Uh, Marvelin has one more point of provision, which seems like it doesn't matter, but you know when you're building a deck, one less four cost unit will always feel good. Versus the most important thing about the upcoming change, right, Kitty? Oh, yeah, right, Kitty. Come here, don't go over there. Go, go over here and talk. Uh, help me talk about this new unit change. There's now a minimum unit limit for decks. Because of the no unit nightmare, which isn't literally no units, except if you're running, say, no, there, it's literally not no units. You have a few units, usually free immune units or something that you can play as last play. Um, you're now required to have 13 units per deck. Now, this does, now, while it does prevent entire games where you'd hardly see any units from the other side of the board, and which is fairly frustrating, not because you not because they're annoying you in any way, but because you end up doing nothing. And being in, an ex in a competitive experience where you can't do anything or half your cards are basically blank is a poor experience and not necessarily something you want in your game, which is why CDPR is finally changing it up. But 13 units minimum does say that you can still have an entire round where there are no units. So there could be some interesting decks out there. I crafted a few seasons ago a version of an IFT deck that did that. The first round was traditional thinning, traditional high tempo, usually ended with a through a summoning circle and a crushing trap. And the newer, the, the third round, because it, it had a good chance of winning the first round, the third round was dominant, it was um, 
embodied by Scorch and immune units like Milva. Milva does not did not need to gain any points because we were just playing traps or other artifacts around her. What was important was Sacentesis because you can play Sacentesis and dump the all debuffs there. Or, and the old, uh, whatchamacallit, Kitty, please don't do that. The old Unicorn and Chironex. I'm going to go feed the cat with her treats while we're doing this. The old unicorn in Chironex used to be super strong. You could, you, you could, yes, yes, kitty. Yeah, I'm not editing as that. I'm not spending a few hours waiting for this to be edited so that I can, so that it, it's a cleaner experience for you. What did I say? Low effort, low quality. And we just put our buffs on the immune unit and nothing short, short of a never scorch could deal with it because indirect fire wasn't that common. We did not have Curse of Corruption in that meta. It didn't exist as a card yet. So it was uh, it was effective. A similar theory could be applied to the upcoming season. You could have one of your rounds just not have any units and you the problem is assuring yourself that you get the right cards for your first for your preferred round. You could end up with half your uh, half your non-unit cards and half your and, and some of your unit cards and they don't jive together and it just becomes a mess of a round but come here kitty don't do that I know that's garbage and I know you're garbage but you, you don't belong there which is straight up interesting um, there is a new board it looks great actually it looks more like a table where people are playing cards which I mean they're, it, it's a it's been always a problem for me. The, the fantasy that is behind Gwent. I have to distract the cat with some more treats. Um, the fantasy behind Gwent is that you are two leaders running armies. Which is why most of the leadership uh, positions in the game. The, uh, the leader cards. Here, just, just play with that. The leader cards are usually some form of command. They're not like super mages. But they're the heads of houses. They are leaders of armies. They are me grabbing a kitty. See? Who's the head of army? Who's the head of kitties? Oh, you're gonna go over here now. And that's the fantasy they want to put forward. And then we get and then and that's why a lot of our boards are places more than anything else. Where they're the the Mahaka mines, where I don't know, some city forest for the Squirtle who aren't really full Squirtle because I mean some of those dudes in the Squirtle deck and the Squirtle faction aren't Squirtle. Right, Kitty? They aren't Squirtle. It's it's a mess, and we're gonna have a video on that with a lot more effort. Yes, Kitty. Oh, it's a distraction. Oh, who wants treats? I want treats. I want I want I, I want I want more flavor in the game because without flavor, all it is is a bunch of numbers being compared to each other, and that's kind of boring. Anyway. And uh, and so you, you get the army feel because you're in places. But then they bring out a board, an actual board, like a table, much like Silly Kitty, uh, like old Gwent. And then the fantasy is a little at there again. So while I do love the board, it looks fantastic. I'm not sure I personally enjoy it. I am sure many people will enjoy it, and I do not fault them for that. I don't know what the cat's chewing on, and I don't care anymore. <laughs> let's see the avatars and boards there's some there was some talk about anti-stream sniping stuff uh, like you can hide the names in the upper left and lower right and some more avatar stuff that they pop up in the middle of the game the upper left and the lower uh, upper left and the is this upper left it's upper left relative to your screen and lower left that's the left it's upper and lower i got it and <clears throat> I don't know if that's anti-stream sniping or that was just a joke that fell flat, because I they, they took a they took a quick look at the options and I didn't see something that like hide your name in game, like if you go in game it won't show the other guy what your name is so they can't look for you like ah, I'm gonna totally screw that guy over, which is I don't know it would be nice for that feature to exist but I'm sure it's not really that tremendous a priority even if it were i don't know it was it was a little unclear so there that's it there's not a lot to talk about but we will be back once the full patch notes are out i'm a little excited to see more changes to the meta i am excited to see the cleaver nerf because cleaver is just so damn good if you know how to play him and i usually don't know how to play him thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this short recap of 
patch 2.02. Well, the video talking about patch 2.02. Anyway. And I hope you come back for more. I gotta work on this extra. Anyway. Yeah, thanks for watching. You can follow and subscribe to me at twitch.tv slash TV or here on YouTube. Dark Fluffy Cloud LP. If you don't know if it's me, look for the lightning bolt. And there I will be. Or don't. Or don't do anything. Don't, don't do any of those. I'm not a beggar. Who I am is Panator. I'll see you later. I wish I had a button that could just let me look at you and then stop that. Ah, I gotta look at the recording button.